Masa de tarta, velas aromáticas, ok, listo. Removedor de manchas, desinfectante, pulidor para llave de agua. Es demasiado. Atención, clientes. Pine Sol Original Pine es lo único que necesitas para limpiar pisos, desinfectar, remover manchas y más. Limpia casi todo con el poder y la versatilidad de Pine Sol. Encuéntralo en las tiendas y descubre más trucos en pinesol.com diagonal cleaning surfaces. He's here. <laughs> Paul J. McSorley here, host of Fear from the Heartland. I invite you to become a Heartlander by subscribing to Fear from the Heartland. Join the family, so to speak. Quite literally, it is a family affair. I tell the stories. My wife, Nikki, is the show's producer writing original music compositions, sound beds, and custom sound design on every single episode of Fear from the Heartland. We work side by side to bring you the most professionally produced creepy pasta and scary stories available. So pause the show you're listening to right now and go subscribe for free to Fear from the Heartland on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening now. <laughs> Enter the inner circle. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. On March 30th, 2015, a user that named itself Unfavorable Semicircle joined YouTube. For five days, the YouTube channel sat untouched until April 5th, when the user uploaded their first video. Though the video has since been deleted, the four-second upload, titled The Sagittarius Emoji 230511, was pretty bizarre. It had no audio and contained just one static brown color field, with what looks like a tiny blurred darker dot, or hole, in the middle upper right of the image. The user posted a staggering 1,247 more videos that day, some starting with the Sagittarius emoji, some numbered, some with both. They all seemed pretty similar to the first, were generally short in length, blurry, and without any descriptions. Sometimes the videos were silent, others had strange, distorted audio. Today we're talking about an internet mystery, one that, spoiler alert, actually gets solved. It's the mystery of the unfavorable semicircle YouTube channel, and it's a meaty one. From April 5th to the 21st, after the initial March 30th post, the videos on the Unfavorable Semicircle channel started to gain attention. Both the volume of uploads and the nature of the videos were puzzling, almost provocative. A small community on Reddit started an Unfavorable Circle subreddit to investigate the videos on the channel. According to Redditors, the first video to the ones on the April 21st connote the first, quote, season of the YouTube channel's uploads, characterized by far less talking, or really any audio, than the seasons to come. The time between April 21st to May 26th, Redditors called the second season, with videos uploaded a lot like the former, except for much more prominent use of distorted background voices, speaking either in ones or zeros. This voice, this speaker, similar in every video, would come to be known as the unknown voice. From the 26th to June 12th, we get a season characterized by microphone fumbling and noises that feel, along with the unknown voice, distinctly personal or human, a hand flicking a microphone, a heartbeat. More videos continued through the rest of 2015 in the vein of the others. But in 2016, the first video, posted on January 5th, was different than the rest. The video has a black background with some fingerprint dots and the unknown voice saying 10 by 10. This video had the same phrase 10 by 10 in the YouTube description field, one of only two other known videos from over 72,000 videos that Unfavorable Semicircle would post with an actual description. The only other known video with a description was Sagittarius Emoji Brill B, a video with a green background and pixelated color dots that would be released in February. This video had the text 1000 in the description field. Until early February 2016, Unfavorable Semicircle was uploading videos at a rate of just over one every 10 minutes, on average, of course, but, you know, some days had no videos and others had thousands. 
But in February, the rate of videos released to unfavorable semicircle gets much higher, increasing to something like three videos each minute. This goes on until February 26th, when the channel gets so big it's featured in a BBC article called The Quest to Solve YouTube's Strangest Mystery. At that point, the article suggests the fascination at the videos and global theorizing on what they mean. Some theories are hinted at, including an unstable person just making videos, coded government broadcasts, or the output of a bot or Google recruitment technique. According to the article, quote, efforts to decode the videos have ranged from attempts at analyzing the dot constellations to questioning the use of the Sagittarius symbol in the video titles. All the while, more keep getting uploaded, at a rate of about two every minute. Hours after the BBC article is published, the original YouTube account is suspended and a new one is almost immediately created. The first video on the new channel is called Sagittarius Emoji Relock, and it's around a 27-minute clip of a kind of black-and-white pixelated thing. In my opinion, it kind of looks like a blurry speaker. It contained a stereo audio track of buzzing electronic noises, some music, and short frames around the image. Another video is posted right after called Sagittarius Emoji Brill 4999, which features a stereo audio track, spoken numbers, and Morse code. On March 7, 2016, a Twitter account is created under the name Unfavorable Semicircle. On the Twitter account, the series Sagittarius Emoji EL begins. The Sagittarius Emoji EL series is a lot like the YouTube channel's bread and butter. Three second long videos with frames of a single color and the unknown voice saying a random grouping of letters and numbers. On March 14th, the first post on the Unfavorable Semicircle Google Plus page, you remember those, is posted containing garbled text that linked to the new YouTube account and the Twitter account. But the Twitter account stops posting after some erratic activity, some of which included a tweet of a YouTube link to the song The Most Beautiful Day by Professor Click. The lyrics of the song describe UFOs arriving on Earth. Discord users made the connection that the song is also in the background during another video, Sagittarius Emoji SQEN, released around the same time. On September 3rd, 2016, a YouTube channel named Stabilatory Newing, originally created on August 24th, 2016, started posting videos. This channel used a different symbol, a circle with a cross inside of it. At first, the relationship between Stabilatory Newing and Unfavorable Semicircle was unclear, but a third Google Plus post connected the two accounts. And so the subreddit was more vibrant than ever, with a diversified group of channels to help piece together what was becoming a vast group of clues to an internet mystery. And the Twitter, kind of on and off, YouTube channels, and the Google+, Plus, they all keep posting. Four or five second clips usually, but they could be as long as 11 hours. Lots of strange and ambient sounds, blurry colors or vague holes or spots, and maybe some light imagery. The troubling unknown voice, 28,000 videos on the original channel starting with the word Brill, and numbered in ascending order. August 10th and 11th of 2016 are pretty standout days in the life of the unfavorable semicircle mystery, when several videos are posted out of form. One is 11 hours of mostly silence. Another video features the unknown voice reciting the alphabet. On February 2nd, 2017, the Twitter account is permanently deleted. Other channels keep going until September 13th, when unfavorable semicircle is featured in a Russian channel's YouTube video about internet mysteries. The video gets almost 400,000 views in the first 24 hours, and then over half a million shortly after that. To date, it has about a million and a half views. Almost, it seems, in retaliation, the unfavorable semicircle account posted a video called Sagittarius Emoji Reset Strange YD on Friday, September 15th, 2017. It has a black background with a static, ambient noise behind it, and it goes for about an hour and a half. Less than half an hour after it was posted, it was taken down. Minutes after the Reset Strange YD video is taken down, the Twitter account and both YouTube channels, as well as the never-used Google Plus page for Stabilatory Newing, were also removed. The Google Plus page for Unfavorable Semicircle remained active. On November 25th, 2017, the Twitter account is recreated by the original author or someone else, we're not sure, and a single tweet is posted the same day at 7.50 a.m. The tweet is a bunch of numbers and letters, A-N-X-B-E plus greater than 6N. It's a, it's a long one. People think the account wants it a little attention or some notice, but again, it's hard to say. A third YouTube channel is created around this time as well, which became the primary avenue for video publication. 
This third YouTube channel keeps posting until March 27, 2019, when the content on the Unfavorable Circle's Google Plus page is removed, several days before the service is due to shut down. Everything is pretty much quiet from then on, but it doesn't mean people aren't still talking about the videos. Here's an example of how engrossed people were in this mystery, using a post by McSweepy Pants back in 2016 on Reddit. They said, quote, Today there have been a few interesting things discovered. The content uploaded seems to come in, when I'm officially naming it, seasons, meaning each day slash couple of days seem to be related in some way. For example, on June 12, 2015, there's a set of noises heard in the videos that are only on that day. Also, each video of that season has a background color that is closely related to the others. It's a khaki color. Although the background will change to a different color, it is still a closely related color, whether it be in hue or vibrance. Each season also shares the same type of sound. During the June 12, 2015 season, you can hear what seems to be a mic fumbling around. Then each video either shares that sound or has one that is extremely similar. With the Reddit page, people moved some of the conversation to Discord, and the discussion continued, along with some wild theories. Let's get to some theories about what Unfavorable Semicircle is for, what it is, what it's been doing, what it was doing, after the break. Mobile phone companies say they offer home internet, but if their internet comes from a cell phone network, you should know. It's just phone internet, not home internet. Keep your home up to speed with Cox. Cox Internet is faster and has more reliable download speeds than 5G home internet. Cox is the real home internet you're looking for. Based on Cox analysis of UCLA speed test intelligence data, Q3 2022 and Cox serviceable areas, visit cox.com slash internet for details. Hello, everyone. What is up? It's Savannah Brimer here from the true crime podcast, Killer Instinct. If you have a true crime obsession like me, Killer Instinct is the podcast for you. Join me every week as we dive into the wildest, most twisted true crime cases. Anything and everything from unsolved, solved, cold cases, missing persons cases, and serial killer cases. Each case will leave your head spinning. So make sure you pause what you're listening to right now, head over and subscribe. That way you never miss an episode. We post every Wednesday and I can't wait to see you there. Hi, hello, how are you? Hello. How are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. How was your Valentine's Day? Mm-hmm. Was it good? Were Fun? you were you saying Valentine's Day? And no one corrected you? And yeah. And rude? Your loved one didn't correct you as you made a fool of yourself? Well, that's love. That's, that's, that's love. love. That's, that's, that's true that, acceptance. That's, that's love. True. That's a beautiful thing. That's beautiful. We hope you had a great Valentine with your Valentine. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. That's love good. is dead. Anyway... Oh. We want to say hello and a thank you to anyone who's listening, spreading the good word mm-hmm. of the pod. Thank you. Getting it out there. Thank you. This can be a Valentine's Day gift to someone. You don't know. You don't know what they like. Me being a little Cupid, shooting your little yeah, ghost town arrow. Shooting your weird history arrows all <laughs> over the damn place. Yep. We appreciate Tiny it. Tiny little arrows that just have no, they just Ow! fall immediately. Ugh. It's like, what's that? Yeah. Ugh. Pick that up, actually. Yeah. yeah. Would you? Throw it out. Mm. And we want to say, what up? Mm-hmm. With a big old chocolate heart to our government. Oh, yeah. We're in love, baby. Mm, it's a beautiful thing. We want to say hello and give goo goo eyes to our mayors. Mm-hmm. Big, big old box of chocolate kale. Mm. Take a bite and you're like, mm, that's chocolate. Then you're like, whoa, what? It's kale. <laughs> huh. That's interesting. I'm going to be polite. <laughs> that goes directly to Ashley Matson. Hello. How about a big old chocolate heart filled with 1099 tax forms? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. All your tax forms in one place. Not bad. You take a bite and mm, that's chocolate and you're like, mm, You're like, mm, I need these. That's a tax code okay. I just ate. Ooh. That goes to Charlie Gilbert. Hello. And a big old chocolate heart covered in chocolate. <laughs> And the inside's just more chocolate. And you're like, oh. I was waiting for, uh, for something thing, else. Is there like the theory of relativity I can bite into? Yeah, it's just more, more of the same. Same. Yeah. That's Cat Joselle. Oh, okay, hello. And to our governor, sitting up there in her 
chocolate palace made of hearts, mm. but she's like a like a queen of hearts, like in a playing card. Oh, I love that. And she's just like off with oh, her heads. Man. But when she goes off with her heads, their heads pop off, but it's, it's shaped like a heart. Mm-hmm. And, it and it floats, floats up. It floats away. It floats I away. Love that. And it How's... floats among the actual chocolate hearts. Are... Ugh, what, a, what a vision. She's a vision. Avian Noble. Noble. So you want no ads, no chit chat, bonus episodes, a free seven day trial? Try it out. Mm. See what some bonus episodes sound like. See what episodes without ads or chit chat sound like. Mm. Early access. Check it out for free. Yeah. I bet they'll look good on you. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. You're looking Ooh. sexy. Did you get yeah. a free Patreon trial? Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. You're, Damn. You're looking seven days freer. <laughs> Damn, don't mind if I do. Yeah. Well, I also don't mind if I don't. Oh, well, all right. Head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash ghost town pod. I do have an, a review to read. All right. I haven't read a review in a while. I feel like it's time for reviews. Thank you to anyone who's left a review on any of the platforms. We appreciate it. It helps. Absolutely. My brother has been going on many dates, and he keeps telling me that he tells people, tells his date about ghost town. So I'm really hoping one of these reviews someday is maybe a woman that he went on a date with yeah podcast great Hoping. um this guy <laughs> is also great you know we should get him a qr code let's get him a qr All right, code that'll be easier that'll be easier this way it's like hey listen mm-hmm. yo you want an appetizer <laughs> you gotta scan a qr code you think i'm joking i'm not i'm actually thinking no, about what it would look like idea. i'm thinking about asking him to do that like a men's jewelry <laughs> yeah that has the qr code scan it listen to some strange history some murder shit and I don't know. Then I have a couple of drinks with my brother. Yeah. Sounds, I don't know, could be nice. Maybe this is one one of them. I hope so. Spreading the good word, five stars. Now, this is an old school. This is somebody who knows. This <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. This they is get deep it. cuts. I know that language. They know. Hi, hello, how are you? <laughs> Ghost Town is a solid five stars. Yeah! Nice. I know they did a great impression when they were writing it of me. Yeah. Oh, my God. All good things. History, check. Pop culture phenomena, on it. Unexplainable circumstances, they have it covered. All that and more in a bite-sized podcast. And don't you dare downplay the importance of the chit-chat check-in. <laughs> I love, That's a threat. I'm in love. <laughs> there was no one I'd rather have discussing my untimely death or mysterious occurrence. Maybe I'll put that in my will. It's from Isabella Anderson. Ugh. Thank you. I needed if, that. If I said, oh, let's, make, let's just do write our own reviews, mm-hmm. which I wouldn't do. But I'm not above it. But I won't do it. But I'm not yeah. above it. I'm just I'll trying just to send my family members for yeah. reviews. I wouldn't do as good of a job as this. So good. Holy shit. Oh, that is a breath of fresh air. Thank yeah. you so much for see how reviews can change us. Yeah. <laughs> They're very important to me and my mental health. This is a wellness check. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go in, do a little check in on us. Check in on you, check in on us. Yeah. I don't know. We all need it. It's circular. And. Then Speaking when that, of circular. And that, yeah. And then endorphin <laughs> dies down yeah. and we go back into it. Let's go now. So we're back into the unfavorable semicircle mystery. And according to Reddit, there are some canonical theories that were regularly discussed regarding the origin of the unfavorable semicircle YouTube channels, Twitter and Google+. So the first theory is that it's aliens. Many posts theorizing that it's aliens, obviously very unlikely. Posts about aliens, according to Reddit, will be removed on the Reddit site because apparently, even described on Reddit, it is too absurd. Then they talk about the number station or communication channel that's discussed at length. The idea of military or some kind of operations communicating through this YouTube channel, it being used as a kind of way to whatever coded messages are being sent to do that in a, in a covert way. Another theory is automated test operations. This is the prevailing theory for a while after YouTube terminated that account but then it went to Twitter, Google+, Plus, so it felt like a little bit less of a viable theory. Trolling. Trolling is a theory. Someone fucked with the internet. Seems pretty strong as well to me. Um, or that it's some kind of abstract art, that it's something that people are making. They're, they're outputting these videos. It's all kind of a bigger, experiential, postmodern piece. Love that theory. It appeals to me very much as a lapsed art student. Then that it's a recruitment puzzle, maybe an employment thing, a secret society, a cult-like thing. Fun theory, obviously, we love that theory. But nobody took it seriously, and it didn't feel like as much of like a puzzle to be solved as maybe like the cicada 
puzzle was, which dealt with coordinates. We did an episode in it a while back. You can find it pretty easily. That really felt like it was more of like a directive versus this is something that you observe and are gleaning clues from. A viral marketing campaign for four years seems unlikely. The work, this is the language that they use. This is not our language. The work of a disturbed mind. Again, I'm not super happy with that language, but perhaps. Or a mundane automated script run amok. This is the prevailing theory, according to Reddit, is that it's something like a script. The channel is on autopilot, running itself through a lot of different codes, and maybe it just keeps going. Or it could be an alternate reality game, which I I guess that makes sense too. But I think all of these theories are really interesting to talk about. They are talked about at length. You can go on Reddit on the unfavorable semicircle Reddit. They're all still up there, even though the page has since retired, which we will get to in a bit. So a lot of discussion until June 1st, 2022, when the unfavorable semicircle Twitter account is up again and posts a series of tweets in a short period of time. One of these tweets is a photo of white text on a black background called ANSWERS in all caps. And it is that. It has a lot of answers. The text for lack of a better term, really solves the mystery. Well, most of it, which is rare. In our experience, I think for an internet mystery that was so prevailing to kind of come to an end, like close itself down. The unfavorable semicircle Twitter account essentially posted answers to common questions Reddit users posted about in the subreddit, numbering them as they responded. I'll include the important things they said and the question, which is important to reference as well for context. The whole message begins with this. I offer my words of gratitude for your interest in this project. I was continually humbled by all your brilliance in a way that is hard to express in words. You all have exposed me to so many wonderful bits of art, technology, and writing that I never knew about before. I hope these answers can give you some of what you're looking for. Signed, Sagittarius Emoji. Exciting, right? The Sagittarius Emoji from all the videos. Then this message goes into what is called a preface. Well, what they call a preface. It says, the project was designed to function around stream of conscious in the moment creation and only has some documented information. Much of this project was lost to time, even to me. These answers represent my best attempt at reconstructing the what slash why based on the memories and documentation I have at this moment. So question one, why did you decide to come to public now? I was overcome with the thought that now was the time, just a gut feeling and decided to go for it. I had gotten close to doing this a few times, I think even way back in 2016. However, for whatever reason, this was the first time that I went for it. Two, if you are truly unfavorable semicircle, can you share conclusive proof, source code and a source image or composite that result in a producible video, for example, or how to find something new in the videos the community isn't already aware of? The response is, the link between this account and the original via the original channel's Google Plus Sagittarius Emoji Real Post should provide conclusive proof. I have also posted the clarified text from Sagittarius Emoji Golden, a previously undecipherable text which reads, there is always more repeating. Three, what is the meaning of Sagittarius and Gemini for the project? The answer to that is, the Sagittarius emoji symbol is supposed to get across the idea of the project communicating something unhuman, as if a message from the stars or aliens. The Sagittarius symbol encourages viewers to look up things about space, stars, and the galaxy. The symbol also has a striking shape, and I'd seen other channels use the symbol in the title and liked how it looked. The circle with the cross symbol, I guess the Gemini symbol, for stability newing, represented the channel's idea of a communication from Earth. The two channels together represented then a combination of space and Earth communication. The symbols were to be seen as a connection to astronomy, space, and the stars. The connection to astrology is incidental and unimportant. While I'm at it, here's the deal with the name that is according to an old note. The unfavorable semicircle name is designed to be weird slash mysterious, like web driver Torso, which, as a note from Rebecca, me, is another internet mystery similar to this that I won't get into because we may or may not cover it in the future. Okay, back to the Q&A. It implies a half of the picture is only ever seen. Unfavorable sounds strange and perhaps implies strangeness of vids. I have a memory of more being behind it and it being slightly different, but this note comes from 2016 and keeps it short and sweet, so we'll leave it at this. 5. The community has suspected there was some back and forth between people trying to solve the project and unfavorable semicircle itself. Were you actively watching the solving effort? If so, what are your thoughts and how did it affect the ongoing project? Yes, I've been watching from the start. 
I remember all the people setting reminders for days and months later to see what became of this project. I carefully followed the community for a long time. I remember seeing the Reddit page with just a few posts, and when the conversation shifted to Discord, for a long while I read every single post that was posted, eventually just checking in once or twice or so. Um, Generally, I tried to see what was of interest and what less interesting on the various channels. Mostly, I wanted to make sure that the goal of the channel was on track. See number six. I wanted to make it a challenge to discover the next thing. Composites, songs, hidden messages, 3D composites, but also wanted to include an occasional hint slash theme to get you on the path. However, much of the core of the project and much of the changes in structure came out of my own desire to try new things without directly checking in. Six, what was the goal of Unfavorable Semicircle? The original main goal was to upload the most number of YouTube videos ever, at least one million. I wanted to make a channel that uploaded the simplest, most basic videos possible, where each frame was a pixel from a bigger image about when combined, rendered an image. My secondary goal was to see if people will watch something truly weird and unknowable videos with curiosity. My hope was to fill in some of the internet mystery space left over by WebDriver Torso when it got figured out. As the channels evolved, the secondary idea became the main goal. To achieve this, I tried to work from the perspective of an unhuman intelligence. There was definitely a space and alien theme, but I also made videos from varying other perspectives or characters as I thought of them over the years. To be clear, I don't think I ever really wanted anyone to actually believe this project was run by an alien or something else. Rather, I wanted them to imagine and explore what that might be like. The other characters I worked from the perspective of included a number station operator, an artist in Maine from Canada making outsider art, and an AI communicating with the internet. However, I definitely played the space angle the most. Everything else, the little puzzles, like the 3D composites, and pushing the idea further with different sounds and different projects, including stability newing, were done basically for three reasons. To allow more creative room for myself, to work on programming projects, and also to provide something more for you to figure out. I wanted to keep putting out something that was interesting, weird, and built upon itself. There was never any pen testing, hacking, clandestine goals of any kind, purely just some weird videos to watch and think about and occasionally find some hidden layers in, and a bit of data moshing and coding errors thrown in. That's all it was and ever intended to be. Last question. How much did we get right? How much have we missed? You discovered an amazing amount. I'd say you got pretty much what the project had to offer. And he goes on with that. But they also added, just to be clear, I posted the Professor Click video because I liked the song and message. It is completely unrelated to the project. It covered some of what I was going for with this channel conceptually and wanted to share it with you all. I've never privately reached out to anyone and anyone else posting anything currently isn't me. At this time, this is the only official unfavorable semicircle account. After this, the subreddit was archived and talk really calmed down. For me, the only mystery left is maybe who this person behind unfavorable semicircle actually is, which I don't think we'll ever really know for sure. And honestly, with all the information that they've given, I'd be down to keep it that way, for mystery's sake. Mobile phone companies say they offer home internet, but if their internet comes from a cell phone network, you should know. It's just phone internet, not home internet. Keep your home up to speed with Cox. Cox internet is faster and has more reliable download speeds than 5G home internet. Cox is the real home internet you're looking for. Based on Cox analysis of UCLA speed test intelligence data, Q3 2022 and Cox serviceable areas, visit cox.com internet for details. Mobile phone companies say they offer home internet, but if their internet comes from a cell phone network, you should know. It's just phone internet, not home internet. Keep your home up to speed with Cox. Cox internet is faster and has more reliable download speeds than 5G home internet. Cox is the real home internet you're looking for. Based on Cox analysis of UCLA speed test intelligence data, Q3 2022 and Cox serviceable areas, visit cox.com internet for details.